Good evening, and welcome to Spine Chilling Cinema. I'm your host, Oliver, the Caretaker Collins, along with my lovely co host, Alice, and her cat, Bubbles, which is not here. Where's Bubbles, Alice? Bubbles is on a date? Okay. Well, anyways, tonight's feature film comes to us from 1960, based on the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Tell Tale Heart. This movie stars Lawrence Payne and Adrian Corey. Adrian Corey has been in the movie Madhouse alongside Vincent Price. Lawrence Payne has been in many TV mo movies and shows, and he was also in the movie The Crawling Eye. What is a crawling eye? I would imagine it's an eye that crawls. Okay, Alice. But yes, we are very humbled that you start your week in right with Spine Chilling Cinema. And without further ado, let us get to the feature film, The Tell Tale Heart. We suggest that close your eye and do not look at the screen again until it stops.
Yes, sir. I'm all right. Oh. Edgar. Oh, God. God, please. In the drawer, please. Why won't you let me send for a doctor? No. I'm... I'm all right. All right. If there's anything you need... Yes. Yes, I'll... I'll send for you.
dollar. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Marsh. I see you have someone new in the house. Miss Claire. Moved in yesterday. Seems like a nice lady. Miss Claire? That's right. Miss Betty Claire. You know her? Uh, no, no. She, she works near here, does she? Oh, mm, the florist down near the square. Thank you. Good morning. What was it you had in mind? A bunch of roses, perhaps. Uh, or... Uh, yes. Y yes, a bunch. This is... Oh. Can I help you, sir? A, a buttonhole, perhaps. How do you get to know a girl? How do you get to know a girl? Why, it's the easiest thing in the world. How? You've got somebody in mind. How? Tell me how. Well, it's hard to say. It depends on the girl, the place, so many things. Suppose... Suppose... She lived just across the street, but you'd never met her. Oh, that's easy. You wait for her to appear, you step forward, you raise your hat, and you say, how do you do? For no reason? Well, if she lives across the street, she's a neighbor. One talks to one's neighbors. Yes, yes, I suppose so. But, but what would you say? Well, either small talk, such as what a pleasant day it's been, that sort of thing, or the direct approach. Come right out in the open. Tell her you think she's attractive and you want her to dine with you. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. But it is easy, Edgar. Look here, what is all this? Are you thinking of finding yourself a girl? Suppose... Su suppose she rebuffs you. Slaps your face right out there in the street. Oh, yes, that's a risk. But it's one usually worth taking. This way, I wonder if, if you'd mind. Did I see you at the flower shop yesterday? Of course I don't mind, Mr. Marsh. Thank you. Oh, may I? I'm not very heavy. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Uh, just may I see you again? We're neighbors. No, no, I meant perhaps we could meet for dinner sometime. Yes, I, I'd like that. Tonight. How about tonight? Well, I, I work late. I, I can meet you here. I thought perhaps we could we could go to that little restaurant on the square. Very well. A day. Thank you.
I was very lucky, too. I, I got work in the florist the day after I arrived. But uh, I've been doing all the talking. I like listening to you. Well, now it's your turn. Well, I, I, uh, I work as a librarian. I'm in charge of the reference section of the main library. Uh, is that all? Can't think of anything else to say. Well, well, what do you do with your spare time? Oh, well, I, I play chess mostly. Carl Loomis and I. Uh, Carl's a friend of mine. You'd like him. Everybody likes Carl. Um, uh, who else lives in your house? No one. Live alone. In that big old house. Surely not. I prefer it that way. Would you like to dance? No, I, I, I'd sooner not. I, I don't mind if it's... It's getting a bit late. I think I ought to take you home. Yes, I... It's been a lovely evening. The stairway is very dark. May I see you at your door? Thank you. The uh, landlady doesn't believe in wasting light. She turns them all out at 10.30. Thank you, Edgar. I think I'll be safe now. Betty. Betty. Betty, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I... Can I help you, madame? I think you can go now, Betty. Oh, thank you, madame. You must forgive me for last night. Please let me see you again. If, if only just for one drink together. I'm... I'm sorry, Betty. Well... Perhaps one drink then. Are you doing anything tomorrow night? I, I was wondering whether we could do something rather special. Well, it, it's Saturday night. You wouldn't have to go to work the following day. Perhaps we could have, have dinner somewhere, or go somewhere and dance together. Or have you some other engagement? No, I'll come with you, Edgar. Welcome back. And as you can see, Alice is back to her queen of shenanigans. And my skull is missing. And it is replaced with what? A heart. Alice. It's nice to see you're embracing your title of queen of shenanigans with the crown. But, um, where, where did you get this from? I, I don't, might not even want to know. Really, does he know? Oh boy. I'm sure I'm going to be getting a phone call from the mad scientist. I guess Alice was hanging out over there and she took the mad scientist's 
heart specimen here and brought it on the show. Yeah. You're going to be in a lot of trouble. I just hope the mad scientist doesn't take it out on me. You're the one who took it. <sighs> but yes, anyways, the Telltale Heart. So far, good movie. Um, basically, Edgar is kind of a guy who is awkward and a little bit of a peeping Tom as well. And went on a little date with Betty and he kind of rushed it a little, little bit, you know, with a kiss. And Betty wasn't having it, but he wants to see her again. And Betty is surprisingly okay to hang out with Edgar again. Probably thinking, you know, maybe he's an alright guy. You know, he just needs to slow down. This has happened to you plenty of times, Alice, on dates. You usually just slap them. And then they still want to hang out with you? Well, I guess you are a queen. And you almost always get what you want. Oh, boy. I'm still worried about this. When word gets out to the mad scientist that he's missing his heart specimen here. Oh boy, Alice, I tell you what. But let us get back to the feature film. And I am going to have to talk to the mad scientist and make sure he understands why this happened. you here. Carl, I want you to meet a great friend of mine, Bessie Clare. Carl Loomis. I've told her so much about you. Good evening. I've looked forward to meeting you, Mr. Loomis. Carl, he's my best friend. That's right. I'm his best friend. Oh, this is wonderful. I've just ordered some champagne. You will stay and have a drink. I'm sorry, Edgar. I'm with people. Well, bring them over. Well, there's too many of them and they're a little drunk. Oh, it's ridiculous. You can't just go like that. Now, uh, just a few minutes. One drink. Yes, please do, Carl. Well, that settles it. He's never been known to refuse a lady. <laughs> Very well. One drink. Wonderful. But that was when I was halfway across the Americas. I've settled down since then. A first-class rolling stone to a second-rate scientist. I've got an awful lot to catch up on. But don't you miss the excitement? A little. But it wasn't all adventure, you know. Hard work most of the time. All the same, I wish I'd done it. Oh, and me, too. Well, you could, Edgar. There's nothing to keep you here now. It's easy to wander when you've got nowhere to come back to. 
Well, I must be getting back to my party. Oh, no, no, not yet, surely. I thought you might ask me to dance, Carl. Yes, do, Carl. Dance with Betty. Go on. Go on, Carl. Very well. Edgar is a decent sword. He's helped me out of a spot more than once. I like this place. There are better places. I haven't been in town long enough to know them. No more than a week. Yes. So Edgar said. I've been working too hard to get around much. I work in the florist, on the square. Thank you. And another drink, Carl. Oh, no, no, thank you, Edgar. Really, I must get back to my party now. Good night, Miss Fair. Good night, Edgar. Good night, Carl. Um, same time tomorrow? Yes. Well, what did you think of him? I like him very much. I knew you would. Everybody likes Carl. Have some more champagne. What did you mean, uh, same time tomorrow? Oh, well, we always spend Sunday together. He comes to lunch and then we play chess. Oh, Betty, you look beautiful. Really beautiful. What shall we drink to? You propose a toast. To a successful evening. Successful evening. <laughs> That's it, I'm afraid. Now your queen's gone. Two more moves and checkmate. <laughs> Another? No, thank you. Two beatings are quite enough for me. You, um... You haven't said a word about last night yet. Don't you think she's beautiful, Carl? She's very attractive. She's... She's so easy to talk to, to be with. You know what I'm like, usually, with women, petrified lest I should do the wrong thing, but it's not like that with Betty. I feel I can relax with her. Don't let your heart run away with you, Edgar. Well, what I mean is, it would be foolish to get in too deep with this girl. Why? Well, she's new in town. She's anxious to make friends. Well, that's lucky for me, isn't it? She's also your first real girlfriend. The first one always goes to a man's head. No, no, no. There'll be other girls. You'll see. Not for me. Just be sure, Edgar, that's all. Don't build your hopes too high. We have the same interests. Did I tell you? I lent her a copy of Ovid, and her reactions were exactly the same as mine. Now, that's rare in a woman, isn't it? I mean, a woman as... as Gay and lovely as Betty. Excuse me, sir. There's a young lady to see you. A Miss Claire. Betty. Show her in. Betty. Edgar. Carl. I didn't mean to disturb you, but I, I wanted to return your book. I remembered how cautious you were about letting it out of your sight. Thank you. But, well, I suppose I'd better go. Oh, well... well now that you're here, won't, won't you stay and have a drink? No, I... I didn't mean to intrude on your game. Oh, nonsense. We've just finished, haven't we, Carl? Yes, yes, we've just finished. I... are you sure? I wouldn't dream of letting you go now. Please. Well, in that case... Oh, I, I was going to show you the line sketchings by Mirror. There are... there are over 50 of them, you see. Oh, that's your plan very pretty. Oh, he's only teasing you. He can play much better than that. How about it, Carl? What about that piece from Smatia? Please.
splendid. Well, I must go home. I've got some reading to catch up on. And I must get up early. Thank you, Edgar. It's been a perfect evening. It was perfect for me, too. I'll see you, Edgar. When? Well, how about tomorrow evening? I'm free. Uh, well, Betty and I were already going out to dinner. Why don't you join us, Carl? Oh, no. Thank you. That, that's an excellent idea. Well, no, Well, I... you already said you were free. You know you don't like spending your evenings alone. Oh, I'll find something to do. Well, why bother when we're going anyway? Very well. Tomorrow, then. I, uh, I'll see you home. Oh, no, Edgar. It's much too late. Besides, I only live across the street. I'm sure Carl will see me to my door. Good night, Edgar. Good night. Goodbye, Edgar. Goodbye, Carl. This one, sir? Yes. That's easy to arrange. I'll have it mounted for you. How long will it take? Well, give me till tomorrow. Fine. Excuse me, sir. I would prefer something in advance, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, indeed. Shall we deliver it for you? Um, no, no. I, I'll, I'll pick it up in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Can I help you? best you have. Yes, sir. Something else to celebrate, Edgar? Perhaps, perhaps. Is Enjoying yourself? Very much.
Betty. Since that last time, I haven't... Oh, Betty. Uh, Betty. No. Uh, it's late. I, I'm very tired. Yes, of course. I'm, I'm sorry. Good night, Edgar. I'd better go. I mustn't be seen here by anybody. Is it Edgar you're worried about? Yes, I'm worried about Edgar. But you said you love me, Carl. I do, Betty. No other woman's ever had this effect on me. I do love you. And why worry about Edgar? Why did you go out with him? I don't know. A stranger here. I didn't know anyone. I suppose I felt sorry for him. Well, that's just it. He's to be pitied. So he invites pity. I told you. He doesn't own me, Carl. Nobody wants to. To a man like Edgar, that's all that matters. You mean a great deal to him, Betty. And to you? What do you suggest? I'll break it to him, Gentry. I'll tell him that we've fallen in love that we're going to get married. He's an intelligent man, he'll understand. He's got to understand. Oh, poor Edgar. You know, this happens a lot in life. You'll like somebody. And, you know, you want them to meet your friends and associates. And they meet them, and they end up liking them more than you. And Edgar just didn't see it until he saw Betty and Carl basically sleeping together. Oh boy, Edgar, Edgar. I don't even know what's going to happen. What would you do in that case, Alice? Oh, you have, you've had to deal with that before. Really? I'm not even going to repeat that. Let's just say, if you cheat on Alice, it's probably going to be the last time you cheat at all all and luckily for Alice and I guess myself during the movie I uh, got on the old ringer and I got in contact with the mad scientist and he uh, thinks it's kind of actually funny that you were able to sneak out the specimen of the heart here so she, he's not 
totally mad about it. So, you're lucky, Alice. You are very lucky that the mad scientist is that understanding. So I could just imagine what he would do. You would maybe have a foot for a hand if he was angry with you. Luckily, me and him have a deal, and I, he wouldn't have done anything to me. It would have been you in trouble. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy. That's why she's the queen of shenanigans, folks. The queen of shenanigans. Another uh, little, I'd say maybe a, you could call it a tidbit about this film and about a lot of films. Even though color was around in 1960, the movie was shot in black and white. This happens a lot in the low budget films and I would imagine mainly it's due to cost and sometimes they're trying to get that that old-fashioned feel and with the Edgar Allan Poe story the black and white works perfect so without further ado let us get back to the movie and let us see what Edgar has in store for Carl and Betty Here any sooner. What's the matter with him, Mrs. Vine? No, sir. He hasn't left his room. He asked me to send for you and wait to let you in. He's upstairs. Has he sent for a doctor? Wouldn't let me. All right, you can go now. Thank you, Mrs. Vine. You've waited late enough as it is. I'm staying, sir. If you think there's anything I can no, do. No, thank you. I can take care of things. You know, I've never been upstairs in this house before. Which is his room? It's on top of the stairs, sir. Thank you very much. Edgar? Edgar? The door is unlocked. Edgar, what's wrong? Come in, Carl, come in. What's the matter? Are you sick? Sick? Yes, kind of sickness. Yes, well, I don't wonder, sitting here with no fire, no light on. I'll soon have this place looking a bit more cheerful. No. No lights. Edgar, you've got to pull yourself out of this. Pour me a drink, will you? table by the window. You must get out of here. Sitting in one room over time isn't doing you any good. I like this room. It's serene and tranquil. And the view is to be admired.
girl wouldn't go away. Not just like that. Not without telling me. If you will pardon me, Miss Clare, that may have been exactly the idea. What do you mean? We checked at Mr. Loomis' apartment. He is well known to his landlady, and indeed the whole district is a rather wild young man sowing plenty of wild oats. Paul wouldn't do this to me. Something's happened to him. An accident. We checked the hospitals, too. I shouldn't worry too much. It isn't the first time it's happened. Twice before, Mr. Loomis has been away on a discreet holiday to escape an unhappy gambling debt. Another time, a woman. And you won't do anything? There is nothing I can do. If, however, you bring me further information, something more definite. Mr. Marsh. Betty. Have you heard anything? No. I've just come from the police station. What did they say? The same as you. That Carl has gone away like this before. You're showing a great deal of concern for him. I... I, I, I don't like to think that anything's happened to him. It's been three days now, Edgar. Are you sure he said nothing to you? Carl didn't confide in me completely, you know. He can look after himself. I'll see you tonight. We can walk home together. There's a, a circus in town. I wonder whether perhaps later on... Not tonight, Edgar. I'm very tired. Perhaps another time. All right. Some other time. Good night. What are you doing? I'm trying to clean the lounge, sir. But the door's stuck. It's locked. You were right when you said that this house was far too big for just one person. So I decided to dispense with some of the rooms. That door will remain locked. But I ought at least to dust, I sir. said it would remain locked. As you say, sir. Are you all right, sir? The other evening when Mr. Loomis arrived... I should never I... have troubled him. I was all right. He only stayed for a few moments.
Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the feature film we are showing tonight, The Telltale Heart. And as you can see, Bubbles is back. Well, that must have been a short date for Bubbles. What happened to his date? Oh, that's, that's horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bubbles. It happens to the best of us. The date didn't really work out too well. Um, the date didn't show up. Poor Bubbles. It's all right. There's, there's more cats out there. It's all right. But it is not all right for Carl. Because Carl is now dead. And not only that, Edward cut out his heart. That's not an easy feat. As you can see, with this heart here, the mad scientist knows how to do it. But he is a scientist. Mad, but a scientist. Edgar is a, works at a library. So that's kind of a little, a little hard to understand, but you know, maybe I, his other hobby is surgery, cutting things out. You never know, never know. A little strange. And speaking of strange, I have not seen the plague doctor in quite a while. Alice, you're friends with the plague doctor. Where has he been? He's been busy, but he will be back. Well, that's just lovely, because I miss him so. If you haven't seen The Plague Doctor, sometimes he comes onto the show, interrupts the show without me knowing he's even going to be on, and he usually has a movie recommendation of sorts. And for the most part, I agree with the movie recommendations. Um, be better if you just let me know ahead of time, but some people like things spontaneous. Yes, Alice, I know you like things that are spontaneous. This, it's no secret there. No secret there. But how is this movie going to end? How is it going to end? We will have to see, but um, I would not want to be Edgar right now because he's losing his mind, he's hearing things, and things are moving, and I kind of feel bad for him. He had, a, he had this coming because you can't just, if you get jealous, you can't go and murder somebody. No, Alice, you can't. Oh, Alice, you're a riot. But yes, I, f I feel sorry for him, too, because the woman that he was falling for, she fell for his best friend. His best friend was very reluctant, but eventually couldn't, couldn't stop, and things happened, and now he is dead. So, let us get back to the feature film, The Tale Tale Heart and see what's in store for poor Edgar. Why, yes, Monday evening. Mr. Marsh wasn't very well that night. In fact, he hasn't really been himself for some days now. He asked you to take a note to Mr. Loomis? Yes. Do you know what was in the note? I'm not in the habit of reading other people's letters. I think it was to ask him to come here straight away. Anyway, Mr. Loomis did arrive that evening. Mr. Loomis was here on Monday night? Yes, now look, miss. I shouldn't be telling you all this, only you said you wanted to help Mr. Marsh. Yes, sir. I think he's a very sick man. I do want to help him. Please, Mrs. Vine, don't tell him I was here. Not yet. Very well, miss. My dear Miss Clare, your accusations are entirely without foundation. 
But Carl Loomis went to Edgar Marsh's house that evening. What if he did? Why hasn't Edgar said anything to me about it? Perhaps he wanted to spare your feelings. We spoke to Mr. Marsh, you know. He has known Loomis for years. He's got him out of many a scrape in the past. It's possible that Loomis went there to borrow money. Marsh hasn't mentioned it because, well, one doesn't mention that kind of thing. You don't know Edgar Marsh. He could be insanely jealous. He, his mind could be twisted. Edgar Marsh has worked quietly as chief librarian in this town for many years. A thoroughly respectable citizen. No, 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 Miss Clare. You don't want to find Carl Loomis, do you? I don't want to persecute an innocent man. Some women never want to admit they've been thrown over. Not even to themselves. Do you think there might be something in what she says? Do you? cigars. Yes.
an ordinary poker. Then why hide it in his bedroom where there's no fire? Why hide it? Now, look here, miss. There may be a dozen explanations. I demand that you search that house. Well, I can't do that. Not without the inspector's authority. Then find him. He's out on a case just now. I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll make sure he sees this as soon as he gets back. Bishop. Bishop Miles. Check me. King moves. Check me. Try again. Try again. No good. I, I can't win. Check me. Check me. Check me. Check me. Check me. Check me. convincing that woman. I told her you'd contact her as soon as you got back, sir. The morning will be soon enough. Here, put this away somewhere. Wait a minute. Here. Dried blood. Any sign? Street's empty, sir. I don't see why you're waiting. Why don't you just break in and search the house? That's not the way we do things, Miss Clare. Suspicion's one thing, evidence is another. You need evidence to break into a man's home. Mr. Marsh will come back, and then we'll ask him some questions. And if he doesn't come back, what then? We can talk about that later. Inspector.
Mr. Marsh. Well, you look as though you had rather a rough night. I... I've been... Betty, I know it's very early to call, Mr. Marsh, but I'd like to ask a few questions, if you don't mind. Shall we go inside? Inside? That's right, sir. We don't want to stand out here, do we? Well, sir, where shall we go? In here? Uh, no. In here. In the study. Now, you sit down, sir. I'll stand if you don't mind, but you sit down. Edgar, we want to know about Carl. Just a matter of routine, sir. You see, there is a possibility that our first ideas about the disappearance of Mr. Loomis may well have been inaccurate. You see, you neglected to tell us that he was there that Monday evening. Indeed, there is information to suggest that you asked him to come here, sent for him, in fact. Now, is that true, sir? I was sick. I, I asked him to come. For any particular reason, sir? I, I, wa I wanted him to bring some things, some, some personal things. How long was Mr. Loomis here that evening, sir? I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite hear that. I said, how long was Mr. Loomis here that evening? I, 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 I don't know, I... Come, come now, Mr. Marsh, you must be able to hazard a guess. How long was Mr. Loomis here that evening? T ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Did anyone see him leave here? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Now, just one or two more routine questions. <laughs> what did you and Mr. Loomis talk about that evening? Come now, you must remember what you spoke about. Mr. Marsh, I insist that you answer my question. Mr. Marsh. Mr. Marsh! You know, don't you? You know! You can hear it, can't you? You can hear it! Hear yeah, what? The beating of his heart! The beating of his infernal heart! He's buried in there. But his, his heart keeps beating. I can't stop his heart from beating. I can't stop his heart from beating. Do you <laughs> Screaming loud enough to bring the house down. I... Yes, I'm all right now. I've had a nightmare. Tell me. Can I get you something? No, I... no, I'm, I'm fine now. Oh, must have been quite a nightmare. Yes. Yes, it was. You were there, Carl. Oh. And I. I was in it, too, except that I... I had a limp. And... And there was a...
Well, Edgar's conscience got the best of him. He had to tell the police what he did. But then he ended up waking up and it was a dream. I don't know about that. But overall, the film was not too, not too shabby, not too shabby. Um, on a review of it, I'm going to give it... And it's not because it's bad. I'll explain after I tell you what my review of it is here. As far as out of five shovels, I give it a three. I was aiming at a 3.54, but then the last part of the movie was kind of moving slow and I didn't expect him to wake up from a dream. I thought if it would have ended, you know, the police take him away, would have been fine. Would have been a little moral of the story is your conscience will eventually get you. Unless you don't have a conscience. I guess. But yes, I give it a three. Alice, what do you give this film? You give it a three as well. One of the few times Alice has agreed with me on anything. And you also agree, what is going on? You can't agree with me twice in a row. Something must be up. You're probably agreeing with me so I defend you when the mad scientist comes over. Even though he says he's not going to hurt either one of us, I'm sure he's going to have a little of a lecture for you and you don't want to hear it. So you're being nice to me, so I maybe butt in. Not going to happen. But Alice also agrees that the waking up from a dream was kind of bleh. But he did end up looking outside of the window and seen what seemed to be Betty. But looked like she had a different color hair, different hairstyle. So maybe it's gonna happen all over again. And he, his dream was a kind of like a clairvoyant thing. He could tell what was gonna happen. I don't know. It makes you kind of think a little bit. You know, that's always a good thing in a movie, but I'm still giving it three shovels out of five. No higher and no lower. It wasn't a horrible film. But yes, we are glad that you tuned in tonight. And as always, if you like spine-chilling cinema, even if you like just this episode and not so much the other ones, which I hope that's not the case, you can always support us by going on our Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and put in a search spine chilling cinema and you'll see a lovely picture of myself along with Alice and I believe Bubbles kind of sneaked in the picture as well. Like the page, comment, suggest movies, you know, do you want to see um, more black and white movies? Do you want to see some color movies? Do you want to see movies from the 50s? Sci-fi movies? Thrillers? Suspense? We aim to please. Alice doesn't care if you like it or not, but that's just Alice, and for some reason, that's what people like about Alice. She speaks her mind, you know, but sometimes gets herself in a little trouble like tonight with the heart. Yes, indeed. And as always, Alice has picked out a cartoon for the end of the show, which it is the end of the show, so you don't have nightmares of the beating heart. So you can go to sleep relaxed after watching a cartoon. Very nice of Alice. Very nice. But that brings us to the end of Spine Chilling Cinema. And we hope you enjoyed the show tonight. And as always, we cannot wait to see you again.
Maybe I'll never have babies. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> 